Radio networks are really hard things to put together. You're dealing with huge amounts of data coming from an antenna, going into either a base station or a digital unit, then being processed and we doing that in real time for thousands of users who depend on 100% reliability or at least fine lines of reliability to, to get them there. And in the beginning, this was a very troublesome task, required a lot of interoperability between the various portions and there were no standards. People had to make up their own definitions. What was the interface between the L1 and the L2? How did radios work? How did they think? A lot of it was proprietary information and that involved into a series of, of methodologies where the industry standard bodies like 3GPP defined what should be done, not how it would be done. And that was fine. And you ended up with four or five large companies each had a proprietary methodology from the radio head to the central unit and back again. And they would stitch it all together and provide you the whole end-to-end -end solution and guaranteed it would work in the network of choice. Of course, the different spectrums around the world. Enter ORAN. ORAN said, ah, now that radio heads are getting more intelligent with the latest 5G innovation of doing more processing in the radio head, more digital processing, we need a methodology. And CGPB also said, that's fine, that's the standard. It's called 7.2, which requires a lot of data to be processed in the radio head so that there's less traffic between the radio head and the distributed unit where the rest of the processing takes place. But they did not define, like in previous years, how it was going to be done. What ORAN did was said, aha, there's an opportunity here for us to codify through the ORAN Alliance and the various working groups, both the methodology, the signaling, the message passing between those two interfaces such that Vendor A, B, C can operate with radio heads from vendor X, Y, Z. Now you have true interoperability. It allows people to scale their network. It allows them to interoperate with multiple things. And th the first part was why. The why was it wasn't time and you weren't doing enough to make it. It was too proprietary. But now when you had digital at both ends instead of analog on one side and digital on the other side, you now not only could, but you should do it. As we move forward, we find two things. The networks are getting virtualized, both at the far edge and the near edge. And as, as we do so, we see many of the, the hyperscalers also interested in, 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 in the market and in taking steps to, to, to participate in that market, sometimes in the core, some, sometimes in the, in the far or the, or, the, or the near edge. But as you look through that, ORAN will morph not just into the chassis-based systems or or pizza boxes that have are closer to, to, to the central office or to the antennas, but more, more importantly, can be virtualized inside data centers or the locality of data where, where there are many data cent, cent, centers scattered around the, in the countryside. The virtualization is necessary to scale out networks because you have the, the, the emergence now of radio intelligence controllers that can manage large networks and large numbers of, of physical devices and, and load balance and scale those very, very rapidly. And we see that as an emerging trend. We see that in participation with the established network providers. And we see a significant trend through virtualization, whether it's in the cloud or, or in the traditional markets.